Mark Rogers TV, Ohio State Edition, talking the Buckeyes with Brandon Zimmerman from the Buckeye Battle Cry. And Brandon, we've done this throughout the 2016 season, and all but one of those segments have been pretty, pretty joyous, pretty, pretty positive. But of course, the uh, the Penn State game, but not the end of the world because uh, the the uh, season moved on into the playoffs, and now we have this game to talk about. Uh, Clemson wins 31 um, nothing. We talked about it a number of times. We saw the issues with the offensive line against better opponents, the wide receivers not creating separation or making special dynamic plays downfield. And those were really the two things that uh, underlined this devastating loss for the Buckeyes. You know, Clemson came out with a great uh, game plan on this. The coaches for Clemson sat there for those past 30 days and looked at the weaknesses for the Buckeyes and tried to figure out ways to exploit those. And I thought they did a great job of it. Um, the defensive line linebackers just completely um, annihilated the Buckeyes up front. The wide receivers were unable to do um, anything. So the Clemson coaches staff did a great job of game planning for this. Uh, on the flip side, the Buckeye game plan for this coming into it uh, is kind of baffling to everyone uh, that's sitting on the outside. It seems like they had a month to to prepare, and we kind of talked about some of the weaknesses Clemson did have, which were very few, but we talked about you know some of those, and it seemed like everyone knew kind of what to do to Clemson to kind of make the Buckeye offense effective, and the Buckeye staff just didn't seem like they do uh, came up with any plan for that. So a very vanilla offense, just like we've seen for the last half of the season for the Buckeyes. Uh, really no creativity, uh, not even creative on getting the ball to Curtis Samuel. It was kind of the same stuff that we've seen. You know, he starts coming around the edge and everyone knows that he's about to get a, a jet sweep or there's going to be a uh, handoff to him. So Clemson knew it. The fans knew it. Everyone knew it. So um just a very poor job, I think, of the game plan coming into this. Yeah, we saw it for the entire bowl season from a number of teams because they have four or five weeks to tweak an offense, and, and a lot of bad offenses came to life uh, during this bowl season. Wake Forest, Boston College, some others, because, yeah, they, they determined where those weaknesses in the defense were and uh, designed some plays that weren't seen on tape. So the, the, the other thing that comes to mind, and, I, and this is coming from a guy that uh, thinks play calling is slightly overrated. It's very important because we have elite athletes on both sides in a game like this, and you need to gain that edge. Uh, so it is important. I think it's slightly overrated because if you execute, the play is going to look good. Um, at the same time, yeah, Curtis Samuel was constantly, and o other Ohio State players, but Samuel in particular, put on the edge and and given the football three and four yards behind the line of scrimmage. We saw Mike Weber run the ball once in the first half. I know that he fumbled his first two attempts, but he, I don't want to say gashed the defense, but he was productive running the ball the first three or four times he got it straight ahead. JT Barrett gained some yardage running straight ahead. It looked like there was, there was no or little attempt until the game was out of hand to attack the defense straight ahead. And there was this, this mindset that we're going to get on the edge and against that Clemson defense, it was very difficult. That is one of the things that we talked about is with how dominant the Clemson defensive line was, Ohio state had to find a way to get them running sideline to sideline to sideline. And so working the edges was something that they needed to do, but they went about it the wrong way. Uh, Mike Weber, JT Barrett should have been used to pound it up the middle like you were uh, talking about and then work the edges to kind of tire out that defensive line. But let Mike Weber and let JT Barrett do the uh, dirty work uh, going straight up the middle where they were um, getting yards. A lot of people say, well, you know, Mike Weber didn't touch the ball because he was fumbling. He didn't fumble until after he carried. He, he didn't carry till the end of the uh, second quarter. So you can't say that the Buckeye staff knew that he was going to fumble. It just – they should have gave him the ball early, let him kind of work, um, let him get into some type of rhythm. Um, even if they gave him the ball five, seven times in the first quarter and he got five yards um, total, you know, it still is working that so that they can work the outside for Curtis Samuel. But instead they just kind of worked from the outside in and that just did not work against that Clemson defense. They were just way too fast and way too talented. 
Now, Brandon, I'm really stretching and reaching for any kind of offensive life to to expose and, and think about possibly them them exploiting this. Benjamin Victor had a nice uh, slant. It was either a slant or a post uh, gain 15, 18 yards. That was sometime in the second quarter. I think they were down 10 yes. nothing, maybe 17 nothing. I think it was second quarter. And the next time we saw him was when he gained the pass interference call late in the game. Didn't really matter at that point, but it was still a game. And here's a guy that we've been waiting to see. We've seen him on occasion, but he makes a big play. When there's, we're void of big plays in the Ohio State offense, he makes a play and didn't seem like they went back to that. I'm glad that you brought that up. I talked about this last night on a Sons of Schmidt uh, podcast quite a bit because it was frustrating being there in person. Um, I had very good seats sitting with the families. Um, so on both those play, Benjamin Victor made great plays. Um, on the post play, uh, just went up and made a catch. Fast, tall guy, uh, made a play, and then the coaching staff pulled him right after that. You know, And then we didn't see him again until the very end, like you said, on the pass interference call where he burnt that cornerback right off the line. JT Barrett just didn't see him until way too late. Uh, but he still made a big play there by running the right route, being able to use his speed to get by the uh, quarterback. And then, but then once again, as soon as that play happened, they pulled him out. So it was frustrating to me. And the whole wide receiver rotation, just like all year, it frustrated me because everyone knew that Ohio State needed to make a change at wide receiver to kind of get something uh, jump started. JT Barrett needed some help out there. All year, we've been seeing Noah Brown. Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin, and James Clark were kind of the four that rotated in and out um, throughout the entire season. So Noah Brown's shown at times he can be good, but he's not the number one guy that they thought he he was going to be. Outside of that Oklahoma game, he's only averaging two catches per game, and that's just not a number one. So the question was going to be what they did with that number two spot. They did not play Paris Campbell really besides on any uh, kick return. So we kind of hope that it would be, you know, Austin Mack or Benjamin Victor, one of those freshmen spent this past month trying to uh, get a chance to learn the system better so that they could make a huge impact in this game. Instead, uh, the Ohio State coaching staff decided to start Terry McLaurin, who's played all year and still only has, I think he has five catches for the uh, season. And he was going to be the answer out there, which is confusing to me. So, um, you know, I think Benjamin Victor shows that he can make some plays. I think he's going to be exciting to watch next year. I just wish we would have been able to see him more in the Fiesta Bowl and early on because I think he was potentially the game changer that the Buckeyes needed on the outside and just somebody that could make that big play that would spark the offense, which we just never saw at any point on Saturday.